people that are just kind of pushing the envelope, mm -hmm. you know, are they using like innovative materials? Mm -hmm. You know, there are a lot of talented, talented people out here, okay. but it's also like seeing like where they're going. This is Collective Drift. I'm your host, Erica Verne Knowles. This platform was created to celebrate all women, the beauty of their cultures and international travel experiences. Welcome to Collective okay, Drift. So, hello. Hi. Thanks for coming on Collective Drift. Of course. Hello everyone, we're here today with Lauren Nomandi. Um, thanks for, of course, thanks again for being with us. Of course. So Lauren owns this wonderful gallery here that we're here with, um, with her husband. Yes. And um, so tell me a little bit about the gallery. Sure. So, since we're here in this beautiful space and the artists that Sure. Here. Welcome, Erica. Thanks Thank for you. having me. So um, the gallery name is Anandi Contemporary. Mm -hmm. We moved uh, from Chicago to Miami about seven years ago. Mm -hmm. We were in uh, Wynwood. Okay. So we were there having great exhibitions, but as times have changed, like every kind of neighborhood, it just started changing. Mm -hmm. So we found an opportunity to move to Little Haiti. Mm -hmm. And this is where a lot of the other galleries are kind of coming to. So we're calling it the Little Haiti Creative Corridor now. Okay. <laughs> and we moved here, we bought the building two years ago mm -hmm. and we built it out to, to kind of our lifestyle and what we wanted to, to do now that we were able to own a building rather than be renters, right? Okay. So we um, designed it, we worked with some local contractors mm -hmm. and lighting designers and landscape architects mm -hmm. and um, came up with this you know, with our gallery. So it's a kind of event space outside, mm -hmm. um, gallery, um, there's a full kitchen, right. bathroom, um, uh, storage area. Mm -hmm. So we really can function and relax and mm -hmm. do our business, but also, you know, have some downtime for us to just kind of figure out what we're doing, you know, get our programming together. So. It's, it's absolutely spectacular. It's, it's stunning. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Labor of love. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> it's gorgeous. Okay, so can you, how would you define Lauren? So who is Lauren? <laughs> Lauren is a woman from Detroit, Michigan. Mm -hmm. um, she's 41 years old, um, graduate of Spelman College, uh, mother of Nataki uh, Anandi, uh, wife to Jemani Anandi. Um, I'm just a free spirit, mm -hmm. um, easygoing you know, kind of person. Love the creative field, always have been in the art world mm -hmm. um, through design, art, fine art. Mm -hmm. And um, I just, I enjoy the, the flexibility of being a, uh, an owner now. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm just really enjoying life. You know, I enjoy meeting people, enjoy entertaining, and um, the space kind of fits our whole, <laughs> fits what's, what's us, what's a part of me. So it's very much. A reflection of you know who we are and who I am you know, through that space. Awesome. Um, can you tell me a little bit more about your cultural heritage? Sure. Um, I'm from Detroit, Michigan. My mm -hmm. parents were born and raised in Detroit. Mm -hmm. They've known each other since they were 12 years old. Okay. So <laughs> our roots, or my roots, you know, are, are in Detroit. We had a family member on my dad's side who really was gathering like all of our family information. Mm -hmm. So a lot of it was. We, we see a lot of the family coming from Savannah and right. Columbus, Georgia, but there's obviously <laughs> right. that, that break in history. So Absolutely. in terms of where that really from, you know, right. I, I'm not too sure. So you mentioned your mother um, mm -hmm. and how has, how has she influenced your life and mm -hmm. your aunts and the other women that were around you mm -hmm. when you were growing up? Mm -hmm. Uh, my mom's only child, so she and I were... Or your, her sister friends. Yes, 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 all yes, yes, for sure. <laughs> so we were, you know, very close, and I'm the only child. Okay. So a lot of her girlfriends, sister mm -hmm. friends, aunts, people I call aunts and stuff, are, um, most of them are only children, too. So we kind of all formed a very tight, tight unit, mm -hmm. and... I think they were just fun. You know, they used to have parties all the time. She was in uh, a little club called the Bridge Club. So they would come over, they're eating, they're drinking all night, smoking mm -hmm. their cigarettes, cleaning things up. So I just wanted to be, mm -hmm. you know, a part of it because it was like so social and so fun. And, you know, we would travel with other families um, and kind of being only child, I liked being with my parents, you know, it's like they did fun things, right. you know, they were very, my mom's a very strong mm -hmm. woman and, you know, very interesting, very kind, very right. welcoming. 
So I really, I feel like I emulate that, you know, every day. I kind of, I'm like, oh, it's just something my mom would do, you know. <laughs> or I look in the mirror and I'm like, I look just like my mom. So right. it's a beautiful thing. Absolutely. So yeah. how is it now being a mother yourself? It's, um, I mean, no one can really teach you. How, you know, she comes into the baby, and talk, and you come to this world and you're just like, okay. So, you know, what do you do now? You know? Right. And people can give you advice, but those children really are like, they really come with their own mindset. My daughter is, is a Taurus. She's very, very headstrong. And some days, Jemani and I just look at her like, I don't even, I don't even know what to do. <laughs> and even like our parents, they're like, she's, she's, she's her own person. She's her own person. Yeah. Right. So I just, I really enjoy that spirit. You know, sometimes you gotta like reel it in, but um, it's just, it's just fun. It's just, I just love taking her out and her exploring things. And now she's really talking in full sentences. So the stuff she comes up with, like, that's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. or, um, it's, that's perfect. You know, it's just like the adjective she starts using right. for things. It's, it's really lovely to see her grow. So have you created that sense, a similar circle of sisterhood around her as your mom did for you? Yeah, I'm, I'm working on it. So I've been in Miami three years. Mm -hmm. So, you know, most of my close girlfriends are not in Miami. So mm -hmm. I think in this third year, I finally kind of found mm -hmm. good friends, you know, and really been able to really make an effort to like, connect like right. let's have a play date let's go to lunch let's have drinks you know because you end up getting everyone's so busy they're Absolutely. traveling they're in work and family obligations and you know and then everyone needs like self-care you know right. so you can't always connect with people so mm -hmm. i feel like i finally found at least a few people that i can just call up like Hey girls, let's go get a drink. Okay. What are you and the kids doing? Like, let's have a pool date, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. So speaking of self-care, mm -hmm. what are some of the rituals that you have learned either from your mom, from your aunts, from your girlfriends mm -hmm. um, that you use now for your self-care? It's probably going away, like taking a little trip, like call a girl's trip or whatever. But I, but I think it's that time where we're really deliberate and saying, Oh, you, you have an event going on in September. Let's all come down and let's support Erica and her event. And then get a hotel room and then you just kind of like veg out. And you can just talk about whatever. You don't have to, there's no obligation to do anything. You right. Know? So that's kind of how I found just kind of a little, just really girl, face to face girl time. You know, just really, what you practice for yourself. Exactly. Because there's very, very little alone time anymore. You know? <laughs> yeah, it's just, the baby's asleep and husband's there. And he's, you know, it's like, I try to wake up a little bit earlier than everybody just to like, I can have a little cup of coffee, mm -hmm. just think about my day. But then two seconds later, it's, it's wrong. Yeah. So really, I think for me, is is able to just kind of, if it's just a weekend, you know, just get away. Like, I'll be back on Sunday. Everything will be fine. Boots in the fridge. <laughs> the world will not yeah. fall apart. Yeah. Your world will not fall apart. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so I've enjoyed um, doing that. And then for Jamani and I, we take staycations locally. So it's nice for us to just... Where do you staycation? With Standard. Okay. And that's our spot. I love it. <laughs> the spot. <laughs> that's amazing. It's amazing. The pool's open 24 hours. So I think that's a good time for us just mm -hmm. to like, just get away. Mm -hmm. it's, it's quiet there. Mm -hmm. No one's bothering you. We can just what's your favorite spa treatment there i like i'm a big hot rocks okay i love those hot rocks just mm -hmm. up and down your body i love sitting on that big marble slab mm -hmm. in that in the the Haman. The yeah, yeah yeah i love that and so mm -hmm. um, have you been to morocco i haven't you have to go to morocco yeah, and go to Haman and get scrubbed down oh it's amazing yeah <laughs> that's where it started right yeah <laughs> <laughs> i can imagine if I can imagine. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, I wanted to switch gears a little bit. Mm -hmm. I wanted to talk to you about art and mm -hmm. how did that come into your life? So my mother's cousin was um, Aaron Douglas. And Aaron mm -hmm. Douglas was a um, uh, abstract um, artist mm -hmm. in the 20s. Okay. And so during the Harlem Renaissance, he did tons of murals across the world. Mm -hmm. um, and he did um, stuff at Fisk University in the yeah. library, okay. the YMCA in Harlem. And my grandmother's sister, mm -hmm. Grace Gomez, um, was, was very much like a society lady, you know? Okay. So she's hanging out with him and there with Langston Hughes and the boys. I mean, it's really like, 
it's like a movie, you know, right. life where yeah, it's pictures in there. Like, yeah, it, it was phenomenal. So she and um, um, our cousin Doug, you know, really formed a tighter friendship because they were all kind of in that circle and hanging out and going to the parties and traveling. Right. And so we acquired a lot of his his artwork. He okay. did portraits of my mother, my grandmother, my aunt. Um, and even in my aunt's home, he did a huge mural in her home in, in Delaware. Okay. So that was probably my first introduction as a kid, just knowing that history of like going to fist with my parents, like, you know, Doug did these murals. And we go visit my aunt, like, okay. this is what he did. So that was my earliest memory of it. Mm -hmm. And probably like around the third or fifth grade when they start asking me, like, what do you want to be when you grow up? Mm -hmm. And I always say, like, I want to be an interior de de decorator. Okay. And my dad said, no, you want to be a designer. Okay. I was like, well, whatever they're doing in these magazines, this is what I want to do. Okay. So really since then, that's the path that I kind of followed. I went to, um, I went to a private school and a great art teachers. Mm -hmm. So they always were just, just very creative people and just kind of push that, you know, right. they just were very much like supportive, like, okay, Lauren, like do a project, design the set for the school play. So they were very engaged in, even though there wasn't like a formal design program, like right. I was with Miami, they're pretty, right. they're pretty honed in on like what you want to <laughs> do. This was just a regular high school, you know? Right. And so when I went to college, I, um, I was an art major. Mm -hmm. So that's where I really began to really study mm -hmm. the broader, you know, aspects of art and the different um, periods, different people, and then going to Spelman, you know, of course it's more African diaspora derived, so you're more understanding like your place in the history of right. these artists that, that women were doing. And then my teachers were practicing artists, mm -hmm. so I'm seeing their work in museums. I was like, okay, it's, it's all connected. But I still wanted to pursue interior design, okay. but they didn't have a program at Spelman, so I was like, Let's just get the base. Let's just get the knowledge of color and scale and material and that kind of thing. And then I went to grad school at Pratt Institute for okay. Interior Design. Yeah, Pratt's right. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. How you mentioned um, learning about um, art and history and mm -hmm. and the black experience in art and mm -hmm. history and its place. What? How? How do you think? Um, African American or Black women from the African diaspora mm -hmm. have influenced art today. Um, I mean, I think it's a it's huge influence, but it we're definitely underrepresented. You know, mm -hmm. when you, if you look at the most popular artists, you know, are, are, are the African American generation, you don't see a lot of African American women. There are there are a lot, you know. what I mean, but I feel like the men, like a lot of industries, mm -hmm. still kind of dominate that absolutely but our stories are as rich richer you know and it's even more of a, of a different place you know right. they're talking about being a sister or being a wife or being a mother right. or dealing with society and how you're viewed and and men and how they're looking at you so i think some of that vocabulary comes out in the work but then also being an abstract artist like right. You can look at like Nanette Carter, you know, she's not painting figurative people, but she's she's collaging like materials and and weaving um, tech, not textures, but creating textures like on the, the, the mylar. But she's still telling a story about her. Right. right. She's still expressing like her intricacies and mm -hmm. her many layers of, of her. But it doesn't have to be like a black woman like in the cotton field, you know what right. I mean? But she still could be telling that same narrative in like an abstract context, you know? Absolutely. So I think women, the, the stories, there's so many more to be told, you know, but I just think, you know, just more exposure, more dialogue about them. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, just everyone's on the same playing field. You right. Know? Yeah. So with you being a gallery owner yourself, mm -hmm. so how have you played a role in exposing um, and introducing the world in Miami, South Florida, to um, women that are women, female artists? Mm. I think I'm working on it. <laughs> it's a good like question to pose, you know, because a lot of um, it's interesting. Like a lot of our friends, they like art, but they don't really know much about it, you know. Right. So if I'm like the only 
vehicle that's really showing them that right. it is kind of like my challenge, like, all right, I need to talk to them about. So I think it's it's inviting them to different shows, whether like it's at the PAM, whether it's at our gallery or, or other exhibitions and really, hey, girl, did you, did you know about Lorna Thomas, you know, like, did you know about uh, Laura Simpson? Did you know about Mikkel Thomas, you know, Mikkelene Thomas? Did you know about, you know, just and trying to like get them to know who, who's who, you know? So right. they, they read about them in the paper, like the Met just got this huge acquisition. They're like, oh, I remember Lauren, like, tell me about this person. Mm -hmm. Even I was saying, um, talking to my friends, just kind of virtually, mm -hmm. I'm telling them about different artists and they're like, I just, never knew about this person. Right. So even if it's just like an easy conversation like that. So I don't feel like I've had a chance to to talk to locals about that as much, but I think now with being in our new space, yeah. it's like a good opportunity to like, or invite people, you know, right. to talk about that, you know, like why don't we see as many African-American women or, you know, who, who do you represent? Mm -hmm. What, you know, how did you pick those different women, you know, to put in your, mm -hmm. you know, your program, so. So speaking of that, like, how do you choose your artists? I think um, my husband's kind of the main point of contact with that, but I think it's, it's definitely a dialogue between both of us, you know, but I think it's, it's people that are just kind of pushing the envelope, you know, are they using like innovative materials? You know, there are a lot of talented, talented people out here, okay. but it's also like seeing like, where they're going like we see where you are right now like that's really good but what are they going to be like in, in 10 15 years you know because hopefully their work is just growing and expanding mm -hmm. and that's i think what we're, we're looking for when we see artists you know we see this artist we have here is patrick palm he's an outstanding artist you know he's a, he's a very young man he's from uh, ghana he spent the last year in detroit in residency program mm -hmm. so the show here is kind of talking about that dialogue, those those cultures mm -hmm. kind of meeting and him being a, a young African man mm -hmm. moving to an African American city right. and how that relationship is. So that's a totally different narrative than we would have had back in back in Ghana. You know, mm -hmm. so but even from the work we saw months ago like in December, mm -hmm. it's like the evolution has just been the, the scale, the subject matter, it's just gotten more let's much more richer, you know, there's much more storytelling. So I think they start getting like a little more freedom, you know, right. it's like, tell your story. It's okay. It's like, okay. It's okay. okay. You know, everyone needs to hear it, you know, explore that material. Mm -hmm. you know, don't be hesitant. Like, what if I cut? It's okay. You cut it. You don't like it. Start Do something else. Exactly. Right. Right. Exactly. Like you want to make this, like everything doesn't have to be like so perfect, you know, it's like, right. so I think seeing artists that are really like pushing that, that envelope and it doesn't have to be so controversial, you know, it can be beautiful, you know, it's like we are, we're people of like, we celebrate a lot of things, you know, and sometimes the work gets a little too heavy. And so this work is amazing, and especially when the, um, the Ankara fabric and mm -hmm. seeing how it's the, the layers of it. Mm -hmm. Are you still practicing? Um, so now I'm doing a little more de tier design projects. Okay. I've just, last year I did a small project in New York for a, uh, my friends opened up a, a beer bar. Mm -hmm. And so I did some consulting and helped them with that. So we're working together on a couple other projects. Okay. Um, in terms of the fine art, um, not so much, but I, I promised myself when my daughter stops putting the paint all over her face or trying to eat it, that we'll really sit down and, you know, I can kind of start teaching her okay. some basics. So hopefully that will kind of get my spirit back up and start. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. Yeah. 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 I used to, but it's, yeah, finding that time. The time. Yeah. That self care. Yeah. Like it's, making it intentional. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And the space, where are you going to do it? What are you, you going to paint? You know, you're like, <laughs> your mind's. Like, what am I going to say? I've been painting like suns since middle right. school. Like, right. it's, it's time to change. Exactly. It's like suns and Billie Holiday. Like, that's right, 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 right. Good, it's good. So we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> and then to switch it again, um, travel. Mm -hmm. So what has been your favorite experience? Um, you mentioned uh, your girls' trips. Mm -hmm. What has been your favorite experience, either traveling with women or meeting other women while you've traveled? Mm -hmm. Well, most recently we were um, 
in Martha's Vineyard. Okay. And so um, a bunch of my families went, you know, Giovanni mm -hmm. and Zachy went, mm -hmm. but um, a bunch of my girlfriends, they all came up this year too. Mm -hmm. So that place to me is like a little magical. You've yeah. been there before? I, well, I haven't been to Martha's Vineyard, but I've been to the Hamptons. The Hamptons, yeah. Mm -hmm. The place, it's like a little magical right. island, right? right? So in the month of August, it's just like every black person mm -hmm. <laughs> just kind of comes down right. there, right? And you're you're there, like, just, there's nothing to do but eat, drink, and sit on the beach. And so that time with us just literally just, like, being on the beach, reading a book, let's talk about what you just read in the book, having a magazine, or just zoning out, you know, was, to me it was, like, so precious. So it, was, it, it sticks with me because it's the most recent kind of experience that we've all had together. Okay. But it's just that that time that you'll never get again. Like you'll never have, you know, one person's about to get another relationship. One person's about to get another job. One person wants to have a baby. So that time, right. you'll never relive that because now there's going to be a spouse possibly there. She might have a baby. That person might have a new job, you know? So it just, that time I look back at those pictures, I'm like, that was a really sweet, even it was a couple hours, right. you know, just for us to just, we made it deliberate. Like we're going this weekend. Mm -hmm. Everyone, they were going to the beach. Let's do it, you know. Let's make it happen. Because if you don't do it, you'll you'll miss the opportunity. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I've heard that it's an amazing time. Yeah. 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 yeah definitely. So yeah, next year. Next year. Yeah. Make it happen. Yes. Martha's been here. Yeah. Go you'll ahead. love it. It's down your whole vibe. Yeah. You'll love it. Awesome. You'll love it. And then tell me about your favorite or one of your favorite experiences abroad. Abroad. Either um, like experiencing a festival or mm -hmm. or just a favorite place. And, one place uh, we went to this summer, um, I'd never been to South America, mm -hmm. and we went to um, Colombia okay. for, for a wedding. And you, know, you it's, it's kind of like being from Detroit. You say you're from Detroit, everyone's like, oh my God, you're from Detroit. Like, you carry a gun with you. You know, so Colombia, I felt like that same thing. Like going to Colombia, they were like, oh, sure, is it safe? And I was like, I think so. I, think so. I mean, right. I don't think uh, <laughs> the drug lords are active right now, you know? So, and when I, and I had no expectations. I didn't really know what it looked like. I, so we landed in Medellin mm -hmm. and it was like, it was breathtaking. I mean, it was the middle of the night, but once we got to the hotel, you saw like the, you know, just kind of the mountains and mm -hmm. it was gorgeous. And it was just something that was like totally out of context for me. Right. And it was like nothing I had ever expected. Mm -hmm. And we spent uh, two days there and then we went to Bogota. Uh, for a wedding actually okay. and it was it was lovely you know i have a lot of friends that i met in new york that are from columbia so it was like oh it was very metropolitan mm -hmm. the architecture is it's like solid mm -hmm. it's cool mm -hmm. the people were lovely you know and it's just like all those misconceptions that's why you gotta travel right right to, to kind of break those those misconceptions down it was it was totally unexpected you know i would and I told her family, I'm like, we're coming back. Mm -hmm. Now so, we got people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I was going to ask you, so yeah, but so was the, the couple, were they from Colombia or one of the... She's from Colombia and her husband is, is from uh, the U.S. Okay. Yeah. So her family was like, anytime, come back. I'm like, no, no, for real, we're coming back next year. <laughs> <laughs> we're coming. Yeah. So um, it was great. It was just, it was, it was really like unexpected, you know? And I think Jemani was like a little hesitant. Like, I don't know if we should go. You know, my dad's calling like, what time do you leave? Text me, you get there. <laughs> and then you get there, you're like, okay, this is, this, it's, it's Columbia. It's, it's Columbia. Columbia. Yeah, it's, it's lovely. Columbia. Yeah. It's like, it's like any city. You know, you don't go down that dark alley. You know? <laughs> what was the wedding like? What did you, the wedding was, was there anything was, uniquely? It was in like, kind of the country. It was in the countryside. Okay. Um, it was a small wedding. We had to be there by 10 a.m. So that was new to me. I was like, this is early. So you're really up at like eight, you know, right, like, get, ready. get ready. Took about an hour to drive out there. And you just stayed all day. You just, there was, it was like, no, you know, here I feel like everything's so regimented. Like, right. Here's a wedding. Then the kata, then you dance, then you go home. Here it was just, everyone was just like chilling, you know, it was like, have some coffee. Relax. The wedding was starting about an hour. The wedding, you know, it's very formal, very beautiful, mm -hmm. but just, you know, there's a little pond. Mm -hmm. the, the the mountains are in the background. Mm -hmm. It was kind of cool temperature wise. 
the wedding was over, it was like, okay, everyone relax. They had little games out there. Then, okay, come on and eat dinner. So you all just had like a really, it was a communal family style dinner. The speeches were just in Spanish, in English, you know, they're translating for everybody. And it was just, it was just like so like sincere and so genuine, right. you know? And then afterward they had a DJ, they had a band. I mean, we were there all night long. It was unbelievable. Then the drinks start flowing. You're like, this is, we're still here. We're still here. <laughs> the, the soccer game came on. They watched the soccer game. She put on a soccer, you know, jersey. You know, it's like, we went for a whole soccer game. And we're still here. Yeah, we're still here. We're still here. We were like, so it was, um, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. But it was like that being involved in their culture. Like, this is what we do. Like, there's no rush. There's no, like... You know, you have the traditional aspects of the wedding, you know, right. the garter, the bouquet. Okay, but so they did some of the traditional, like, American things. Exactly. But we're, we'll be inside watching the game. Okay? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Having a drink. There's a DJ, you know? So um, it was great. It was just great to really get into that that culture. So you really felt like you were part of part of her family. Absolutely. Know? Yeah. That's yeah. interesting. Well, what were the women like in her family? Um, her mother is... Um, she didn't speak a lot of English, uh -huh. but uh, very like beautiful woman. She's an, she's an artist. She's a practicing artist oh, over there. Wow. Yeah, so she makes these like beautiful like vessels like out of like um, silver. Okay, it, it, was, it was gorgeous stuff. She made her her now son in law's wedding band, mm -hmm. and so she was very social in a sense that she was introducing us to everyone like. You know, these are my daughter's friends mm -hmm. from the U.S. They came all the way over. So you could tell that she was very happy to see us, mm -hmm. but she kept apologizing. Like, I'm so sorry, you know, I don't speak English. But I was like, we're in your city. You know what right. I mean? I apologize that we're not able to speak Spanish, but but you could get the same. You understood what we were talking about, you know? And then her sister was there. Um, the bride's girlfriends were all very friendly, you know, right. just like any young 20 something, you know, they're yes. just having a good time. So lovely, like very, very lovely people, you know, fancy though, you know, they're like, they're fancy, you know, right? So they have little hats, you know, very like, everyone's like real tailored. That's, okay. a, that's a good word. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Women are wearing very nice, you know, it's not like bohem bohemian kind of, right. you know, it's very like, Polished. 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 That's a good word. Yeah. 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 I was like, okay. okay. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. Fun. Usually it's like, you, know, you think of, I think of Colombian women and it's like, yeah, you know, someone is very good together and yeah. beautiful. Yes. Like you get this beauty. Yes. It exudes this beauty. Yes. Like they're, they're standing tall. Yes. Educated. Yeah. 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 They're, yeah. Yeah. That's it. That's awesome. So it was good. It was good. So that was, that was a very memorable mm -hmm. trip. Is there anything that you, um, so to say, taken away from that trip that you've brought back with you in terms of even um, your the way you live life or just um, a small habit or something you've learned? Um, I guess also, I guess bringing back that within like South America that there's so many other countries, right? And that there's still like um, what's the word? It's like you're from the, the in America, like you're from the South, you're from the East, you're from the West. There's there's still like um, assumptions about people, you know. Right. So coming there, I'm, I'm I'm thinking one thing, you right. know, and then I'm leaving there like kind of validated, like okay, this is this is. This is different than what I thought, right. but all the people that I've met from there are are like that. They're just polished, like mm -hmm. great people, you know. So I went there like a little nervous because you're fitting into that. Maybe something might happen, but then you're like, no, no, no. But this girl's from here, and this guy's right. from here. So I think I took back that. Stop making assumptions about things, you know. Get to know someone, talk to someone, right. you know that that. You know, you can't just assume. Exactly. You know, make Great assumptions. assumptions. And I, I never thought I was like that. But you know, never going somewhere, you automatically are like, mm. <laughs> you have to. You, you make your prejudgment. Exactly. Right. Your dad a drug floor. You know. You know. And I joke with her about that. So she's like, right. Everyone like was thinking that. You know. She's like, 
it's like it's just yeah. so don't judge a book book by its exactly. cover. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. That's a that's a Be good open. Point. Yeah. And I mean, and it's good that you were able to self reflect. Yeah. 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 And see that. Yeah. yeah. Let your guard down. You're not like, oh, this is Lemon City. It's a motorcycle. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Young kids walking down the street, you know? Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Right. Uh, I wanted to ask you in regards to your design and your artwork, um, and then even bringing art here. How has um, travel influenced that? Oh, I'll, I'll take like Cuba for example. We went to Cuba in April mm-hmm. before it became again Trump, whatever, mm-hmm. and <laughs> and seeing like how well artists live and how like well respected they are right you know and how they are um, really like pillars in their community they're really like the superstars in their community and here i feel like some are but some are just kind of like all right that's that guy down the street painting on the wall you know but i think there they're really like really celebrated Mm -hmm. and so we have some friends from going there you know, a few times we've developed some relationships and, you know, I've gotten some clear artwork and it's, it's more for like our private collection versus right. showing them because we also found that bringing the artwork, you can only bring a certain amount back. Okay. You know, the government's pretty restricted. Okay. As yeah. Like, so you got to figure out a way to pack it up neatly, you know? because it's, it's still so controlled. Everything's right. so controlled in there. But then I also found the, the artwork in terms of their, their um, subject matter right. is pretty controlled. Like they, they can't really talk about like Black Lives Matter, right. uh, police brutality. They, they just can't, you know, because right. it's just their government just, you Doesn't, know. Yeah. yeah, it's like paint a beautiful picture. Paint. Really holiday. You know, like yeah. this this is what we want you to, to do, you know. So I think us um seeing that, you know, how a, a whole country can be so restricted, they're artists, you know, like artists are supposed to be like free thought, free mind and have to, and have to have those restrictions. Like if they didn't, like it would be even more amazing because they are very, very talented, you know, their schools really push the arts and they're like highly, highly skilled. Mm-hmm. you know artists over there so um so i think for us it's just being thankful you know we, right we are here and that we're able to to pick other artists from other countries and you know go to another country and we might be able to cure you know more work in there it's just like wow this is this guy is amazing like but to be able to show him in the states it's so much logistics and but it's like his story needs to be told but yes. I don't. I don't even know. Is it worth us <laughs> figuring out? Figuring, right? figuring out because it's it's not so easy you know, up here. So we're here. We're in Little Haiti, um, which is part of Miami, mm-hmm. um, in South Florida. What are some of your favorite places, things to do here in South Florida? Um, well, our immediate neighbor, the um, the Little Haiti Cultural Center. Um, I discovered a, a dance class. Okay. So it's ten dollars for adults. It's free for the kids, and it was just so fun. You know, mm-hmm. I'm I'm not a good dancer, you know, but she's, you know, anyone's welcome to come. You right. know, it's just class at twelve o'clock. Come on, you know, right. maybe ten dollars, and it was just it was just so nice to know that something that fun is three blocks away. You know, right. so I can bring my daughter here on Saturday mornings. We do that, then we come here and. You know, do some work, and that little the whole center. You know, there's a nice museum in there. Then they've got the little marketplace. You can get some good moonshine, and, you know, little trinkets and stuff. But it's that's what I love about this particular area outside of other places I've been in Miami because at least there's like could be one little block. You just it's a little preserved of their their culture and heritage. You right. know, without you know, going into like the mom and pop stores, but it's a place that's like celebrating stuff, the exhibitions, Absolutely. the dance classes. So it's like an active community of mm-hmm. people like, this is, this is how we're living, this is what we okay. do, come on, you know, get your drink, go dance. You know? and, have- <laughs> and have fun, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, 
Of course, the beaches, you know, Miami okay. and some other. Hollywood is probably my favorite beach. That's the beach I grew up going to. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's lovely. It's lovely, lovely beach. So being from Detroit, um, summers are very short. Right. <laughs> so here, Not the nude part of Hollywood. That's not where I don't mind the nude part. That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying I didn't grow up going to the nude part. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> Actually, ended up accidentally going there with my best friend. One of my best friends, like, when I was in high school and it's like one of the skip days and we like skip school That's hilarious. and took the bus to the beach and like thought we knew where we were going. And you're like, uh, oh, there's a bunch of old naked people. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you get for skipping school. That's what we get for skipping school. Right. Don't skip school. Don't skip any cool. kids. Right. <laughs> you end up looking at old naked Exactly. People. <laughs> exactly. Like, so yeah, Hollywood is a, it's yeah. a great beach. It's a beautiful beach. Um, there are kites there. Did you know yes. there's a kite stand? Yes. Yeah. 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 It's pretty cool. Yeah. And that's what Miami is just, it's, it's so, you know, growing up, there was a place you went to for like spring break and you right. crazy on South Beach. And when Giovanni, you know, moved down here and then a few years later, we reconnected, you know, he was, you know, basically like, I can go back to Detroit, but Miami's really nice. And I was like, okay, you know, I'll go see it. Mm-hmm. And then you're like, wow, it's so much different than... Mm-hmm. Than I expected. You have all that. You got South Beach if you want. If you want to get in it, you right. know. But then you have, you know, North Miami. You right. have um, Coconut Grove. Right. And you have all these like historic other neighborhoods, right. Overtown, and, and just other parts of history that obviously I didn't grow up here that I never knew about. So it's nice to just get to know those places, those places and what's happening, and the new restaurants coming, and the, and the reactivation. You know, in some of those areas. So, what are some of your favorite restaurants? Favorite restaurants, um, in a way, cafe in Wynwood. It's like a Israeli Middle Eastern. Being from Detroit, there's a lot of Middle Eastern people. Really? Yeah, there's a huge community. So, I grew up eating that food. So, mm-hmm. it was this food is, and it's small, and the, the way it dresses and the chefs, everyone's like super nice, and the food just, it's just good. It's just right. fresh. Um, um, I always call it KYU, but Caillou and Cute. Cute in, in Wynwood. Mm-hmm. One of my favorites, definitely. Japanese just barbecue, whatever just, fusion they have there, it's they it's, it's, it's excellent. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like the crispy quail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's so like, good. Like, trust me, it's actually really good. Exactly. It's not just your standard kale. No, 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 no. <laughs> not even their standard. It's uh, the place is unbelievable. Mm-hmm. Um, I think of like a fancy night out. We like to go in Hollywood. I like Hollywood a lot. Gigi's, we go okay. there. They've got, that's a nice little place. And Hollywood's like a fun. It's kind of like cheesy, but it's okay. it's a cute. We go there for like a little getaway. You know, just go eat. We we'll stay at a hotel up there. And just, you know, it's just nice. There's so much, so much to do. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And I think the other favorite is that oyster bar, mm-hmm. uh, River River yeah. House down mm-hmm. down in Brickell. Down in Brickell, yeah. <laughs> That spot, that's uh, <laughs> yeah, that's definitely a go-to. So good, yeah, so it's good. really good. What are your favorites? So I love Q. Mm-hmm. It's definitely one of my favorites. Um, there's a Jamaican, and actually, no, it's not Jamaican, but I'm gonna say Caribbean because I cannot remember the island mm-hmm. that they're from. Um, I'm gonna say it's it's BM Market. Mm. It's a hole in the wall, and they have ackee and sawfish roti. Oh, which is like nice, it's really different. Yeah, and, but the food is like really spectacular. Okay, um, I like sugar cane and oh Midtown. yeah, that's, good. that's like a classic. That is good. usually go to. Yeah, yeah. Um, I went to Buck yeah recently. Oh, yeah. It's pretty, it's really interesting. Okay, like quite unique to go around and um, just look ahead. I have to, of course, mention like shucking and jiving. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. If, if, if apparently That's in my neighborhood like, too. They got into like the whole fried chicken um, <laughs> debate. Not, debate, the sandwich, the sandwich. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, but I always they don't have it on the menu. They have comforters on the menu. Okay, but they don't have like a comforter meal. So if you want a comforter meal, yeah. you can ask for one and tell them that they're supposed to charge you for a chicken meal. Oh, and it's the same. Okay, so that yeah. okay, so there. Um, Oh, that's in my neighborhood. It's a shame. Yeah, you it's gotta go back there. It, it's good. Yeah. And I haven't been to their brunch yet. I need to do that. Okay. Um, a little greenhouse in Overtown. Oh, yeah. So good for some soul food. But yeah, those are kind of uh, it's nice. Yeah. yeah. The staples. Yeah. 
And then Marcus Samuelson's opening up a restaurant. Yeah, he's yeah. opening one in Overtown. That should that's, be good. That's going to be really yeah, good. It's, I'm, I'm glad he did that. Mm -hmm. You know what? Opa. Opa. Have you been? You haven't been to Opa? Mm -hmm. It's right next to Gigi's. I'm going to talk about it's right there. Yeah, yeah it's and good. Can, and you can dance on the table. Oh, I like that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. It's fun. Yeah. It's okay. a great, fun Greek, like, casual dining. Nice. Fun, like, really good food. It's fun. And it's fun. Okay. Yeah. I'll do that. It's a ton of fun. Okay. Oh, uh, oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> like I'm sure you can break some plates. I yeah, some, like somebody's got hurt and sued them a while back, but now they have signage on there like dance on the tables at your own risk. Got you. But they have belly dancers that come and dance. Oh, that's on the cute. Tables. Yeah. Okay, that's like a really good. I would say if you could ask women, any woman, a question, mm -hmm. what is your question for women? I guess that's a question. If you were to be truly selfish mm -hmm. and everyone's fine, you know what I mean? Like, what is it that you would like really want to do, you know? Okay. Because a lot of people are doing jobs or doing things because this is, is kind of like what your parents taught you. Like, mm -hmm. you're going to college, you're going to get a degree mm -hmm. and you're going to get a job, you know? But what if, what if you're like, I, I'm going to be a private dancer, you know, right. what I mean? like, it could be something like totally, but it's like there's freedom and I can dance and I can entertain people or, or it could be, I want to be an astronaut, you know, right. I think it's like, if we really like think about really just really think about ourselves and, and not worry about everyone's fine. Everyone's going to be, this is just kind of like in a dream world, you know, that, that kind of question, maybe I would pose like, what would you want to do? You know? Cause I think a lot of us are, are always like, get married and have a baby, you know, it's like, but that's, that's not everyone's path. And it's, it's not really fair because it's, it's not going to happen for everybody. And it's totally fine. You know? Absolutely. So it's like, wh what else do you see yourself as a woman? To, so you can be fulfilled for the rest of your life, you know? Yeah. That, that's very important. Yeah. Because yeah, we do take on all of these roles. Yeah. And it's just, even in the, not even think of it if it like professionally i liked how you said it initially you know it's how are you, how do you want to leave your mark your mark yes yeah yeah, yeah. Because that could just be you know you're a loving person right and it could be as an artist right it could be you know a, a number of things right that it, like, right. so the last question okay. is um how would you define um a woman what is a woman to you a woman is badass, um, stronger than I think. I think the limits that we are tested, you know, we're so resilient. I think it's 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 really unimaginable, you know, the things that we endure, the things our bodies endure monthly, you know. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's, it's um, I think we are. I think we are really like superhumans, you know. We are really like we are bringers of, of life, whether it's physically or just people's presence, you know. Um, I think we are so just dynamic, you know. We're like so interesting, we're so beautiful, we're tall, we're fat, you're, we're thin, we're just like, you, you can't really put us in a, in a box. box. Yeah. yeah, it's like we're gonna just break out of that bad boy. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. This was so fun. Thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Yeah. Hey, wait a second. I want to make sure you get this information. Of course, Namdi Gallery isn't open right now. We're in the middle of this pandemic, but you definitely can go on to their website, namdicontemporary.com to have a virtual tour. Make sure you also follow them at namdi underscore gallery on Instagram. That's N-N-A-M-D-I underscore gallery. And when everything opens up again, you can visit their gallery in person. That's 6505 Northeast 2nd. Avenue, Miami, Florida. Thanks again for listening. All of this information is going to be right there in the description. And while you're in the description, make sure you subscribe to Collective Drift. And if you like this episode, please like it. And please feel free to leave a comment on what you thought of the episode or to answer Lauren's question. Um, remember to follow Collective Drift on Instagram as well. Ciao for now. Stay safe.